What up guys? Do you want to play with a pro player in your game right now? If that's a yes, then we created something just for you. It's called InstaPro, and we are so proud of it. Just go to our site, Pro Guides, which all of you already know of, and then find the pro player you want to play with and instantly jump into a game with them right now. They'll teach you all the tips and tricks to winning just like them, and they'll take your skills to the next level. Thanks so much for the support recently, guys. We just love giving you the best tips and strategies we can to improve your games. All right, let's get right into the video. Hey, 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 welcome back to another Top 5 Fortnite list. So far, we've covered the best builders, top editors, and you name it. And we've noticed a topic that doesn't seem to get enough coverage. That's the most underrated players in competitive Fortnite. These are the players who outbuild their opponents, who have godly accuracy and excellent placements. They leave other players in the dust, yet not many people know their names when compared to big names like Tifu and Ninja. So today, we're going to be counting down these top five underrated players and discuss why they may be looked over. And who knows, you could wind up on one of our future Fortnite lists. If you want to learn how to step your game up to the next level, go to ProGuides.com for even more tips and tricks the pros use. Feel free to make your own list as you go along and let us know how it squares off against yours. All right, let's get into it. Once again, this is Keith Allen Henson, and let's start. Coming in at spot number five, we have Sin Aspect. Aspect has a reputation for being immensely good at the game. Despite not qualifying as of yet for the World Cup qualifier, he's shown astonishingly consistent performance among the top tier pros. He's been an incredible force in the Fortnite scrim community since the start and is very well respected. Ghost of Light vouched for Aspect, tweeting out this, Only three duels amongst all duels have placed consistently top 25 every week of the finals. Placing top 25 amongst thousands of other pro players seems like an insurmountable task in itself. Just imagine for a second, okay? Maintaining consistent landing, good rotations, and end games. Three times. Yikes. But this isn't too hard of a feat if you're as good as Aspect. Aspect is a mechanically skilled player who boasts incredibly good game sense. He's able to outplay even the best with simple but effective strategies. Some of his gameplay revolves around blazing fast maneuvers designed so that his enemy is unable to keep up with him. Now, if that didn't convince you guys, just check out this clip of him absolutely killing it. To give him a lot of space to work with. Like I said, highest priority right now is holding the high ground and he's actually gonna lose it with a moment of little, oh, actually no, he fights it right back. And oh no! In, and he blocks him with the stairs. Oh. That player couldn't even move and just continuing on through, not taking a single storm tick. Is this actually gonna happen? Is he gonna be able to drop a 20 bomb here? He is way too good. And he's forcing players out with the stinks. 16 eliminations, seven players left for Aspect oh to potentially goodness. get Elims off of because that's honestly what we're counting here with how he's playing this game. He's just slaying everyone out. 18 eliminations for Aspect. He keeps going. That's number 19 for Aspect. Gets another Elim and he is on fire. He's he waiting. High ground. He's waiting. He's forcing players into bad spots. He's getting another one on the funk. Oh my word. No that's way. one more player he's remaining. He's on a rampage right Right now, this is actually crazy. One Goodbye. More Goodbye, Ray. And <laughs> his aspect with 22. One of the reasons Aspect probably hasn't attracted much attention is due to him being a bit dull. Much of people's popularity these days revolves around personality and the ability to entertain thanks to Twitch. Regardless, he's proven time and time again that he can hang with the top pros by placing top nearly every event. Even Tifo acknowledges Aspect. What do you guys think? Does Aspect deserve the number five spot? Or is he just another typical pro player? He has many high placements across many LAN events. And we have no doubt he'll absolutely dominate in the future. All right, guys, heading on to our number four. All right, if you thought Aspect was good, check out Clicks. MSF Clicks glides in at spot four for several reasons. Despite being a young 14-year-old prodigy, he's amongst one of the best competitive players along with his duo partner Skeptic. 
He's shown time and time again his potential to not only hang with the pros, but to overcome some of the best in the world. His strengths revolve around being very agile, young, and fast. Although many of these young players may not be as tactically skilled as players like Tifu, clicks more than makes up for his speed. When we take a look at his recent placements in the World Cup qualifiers, he's not only placed top five, but he's done it three weeks in a row. He's also demonstrated how consistent his gameplay is in the late game. Watch this guy absolutely dominate the game of the World Cup qualifiers. Oh my god. This clip outlines how capable Klix is when dealing with edgy situations. One thing that I see most of these pro players have is confidence. The key to mastering all difficult situations is believing you have the potential to do well in in-game scenarios. That's key. I say it time and time again, and I will keep saying it. Don't ever put yourself down. Pro players practice hours and hours every day sometimes up to the point of not eating or even sleeping. So if you're not putting in the time as they do, hey guys, don't feel bad if you're not as good as them, yet. The best area where Klix excels is his tactical ability and speed. He's able to play with opponent's mind, taking them apart piece by piece. This type of gameplay is also proven to be very effective at the pro level. Let us know your guys' thoughts on whether or not Klix deserves this spot. At this point, I'm sure you guys have no idea who's next. For number three, we have the much anticipated bug hub from Team Sentinels. Sin is actually a smaller organization compared to many pro Fortnite teams, but it has considerable reputation for hosting some of the best Fortnite players around. All clan members of Sentinels, whether it be bug hub, animal, aspect, Carls, have all shown to be phenomenal players. They each have top placements and earnings, and that's not debatable. But something sets bug hub apart from the rest. What is it? Let's find out. Bug has started showing top-tier performance since he started scoring big at online tournaments. He nailed it with a second-place finish in the World Cup warm-up as he is now qualified in both solos and duels with ease. Okay, it takes a special type of player to qualify amongst hundreds of bloodthirsty players looking for their share in the World Cup. Bugha not only excels in pro-competitive environments, he's actually a playground warrior too. He's a mechanical player. When we talk about mechanical skill, what do we mean? Mechanically skilled players have the biggest advantage. That's raw skill. Whether it be aim, building, or editing, they're all a notch above the rest. This guy is able to build and edit at top speeds, comparable to even Mongrel and Mr. Savage. The bottom line is this. If you were to fight Bugha or Mongrel, you couldn't tell the difference. Their skill gap is so close, it's crazy. Bugha, amongst his many incredible feats, has even pickaxed Tifu to death, live. Imagine the reputation acquired from that, making a pro player such as Tifu look like an absolute bot. Bugha is not only endorsed by the pro community, but everybody seems to think he's one of the best. We saw your comments on previous videos. We checked him out and decided he belongs on the list. If Bugha was number three on the list, imagine who comes in at number two. You guys can go on ahead and take a guess, but I'm sure you won't see this coming. That's right, we have E11 Stompy. Stompy, from the EU region, is actually one of the best players in the world. 
Like many other players, he's been an incredible force in the Fortnite competitive gaming world since the very start. Yet, he's not very well known. Most likely because the European pro scene doesn't get as much clout as the North American pro scene. He's been kicking it out with absolute mind-boggling performance ever since the start of the World Cup. Stumpy is the only player who has placed top 10 every single week. That's alongside three first place performances to top it off. This leads us to believe he deserves this spot. What do you think? Stumpy is a very aggressive but methodical player. His intensity towards other players is the main reason he is successful. But he's not only aggressive, Stumpy knows when to go all in. You can see that in his intelligent plays. The man's an absolute savage and is known for hitting incredibly high kill counts in top tier lobbies. Talented, fast, and deadly are some of the many terms to describe this player. Stumpy's ability to stay so completely calm and controlled, even while W King in the WC lobby, shows you some of his many talents. Down to our top seven, Stumpy. One of the most notable players from the European region on the high ground right now. Bottom right of your screen, Dalo, 44 points. Stompy, top right at 44 points. We've now made it to our top five, so more placement points will be earned. Pressure coming on in. You've got Barracks playing in the middle ground, trying to heal whatever they can with that campfire and mini usage. Stompy getting aggressive from height. Now just two layers apart are all four of these players. BYK outside the zone should drop here any second. There they go. Stompy has lost the high ground, but still has the most health up there as Dalo's sitting pretty, letting the others fight. Dalo can outlast any player in the zone. He drops into the storm. The shotgun comes in, but it's Stompy at one HP with the elimination and the victory royale. You may have never watched his stream, but Stompy is one of the best players in the world. In our opinion, I mean, he's even better than players like Tifu. In spite of Stompy qualifying for the World Cup in the first two weeks, he has also consistently nailed placement every single week. That secured him some extra prize money and helped him show his consistency and skill in the game. Stumpy has an incredible understanding of the late game. Normally when we think of the late game, we're thinking of tunneling, rotations, and such. For Stumpy, this means the kills. The most notable situation when he's in the late game is when he drops down for an engagement. His consistency is what really sets his gameplay apart from others. He really gives WK new life. Okay, now if that didn't convince you guys that Stumpy is on a whole nother level, then check this out. He's left on his own in a duels in-game arena game. So, has all of this made up your mind? So who do you guys think should take the second spot? Let us know below. Now, before we get into the number one, I just want to let you guys know that all these players are winners. They're all top pros. But fact is, certain aspects take precedence over others. All right, guys, we finally arrived at our finale. We have FaZe Dubs for number one. Dubs has a reputation for being the epitome of a Fortnite monster. He smacked the competition, making other players look like noobs. Interestingly, from a certain angle, you probably won't even think Dubs is that good. But with hindsight, when we take a look at what he's done in the past couple of months, whew, we see mind-shattering results. No player has qualified three weeks in a row for the World Cup. That's right, if these were qualifiers for three different tournaments, he would have qualified for every one of them. He makes players like Tifu and even Mongrel seem like amateurs. The ability to guarantee placements amongst hundreds of thousands of the best players in the world is in itself a completely insane task. One of his key features which separate his success from others is that he's so confident in everything that he does. His measure of good game sense paired with aggressive gameplay make for a lethal combo. A few months ago before hitting the scene, Tifu himself asked Dubs to be his dual partner. 
Now, this definitely could have had a double meaning. I don't think personally Tifa would message anybody who he didn't deem very good without a purpose. You guys can say what you want, but this clip speaks for itself. Dubs, we talked about him earlier. <laughs> Absolutely outstanding. Just in all these Dubs. games. He has 67 points in this lobby now. He's got four rockets in that RPG, two eliminations already. All these players going into these late games with these early eliminations that are really, really paying off for them. I like that he chose there. So he drops down on two players that are build battling, and he's like, oh. I'm just going to back up and just 90 my way up. And look at this. He's already found an, an Elim. Reloads the rocket. This is huge. So Dubs is one playing for late game, just trying to make sure he can hit at least top 25. And then he's going to go on the offensive. He tries to trade out with someone 30, down to 35. He's in the critical. He needs to find this shot. Down to 50. Oh, my. Yes. He picks it up. 45, Last 35, second. 25. Okay, my heart's racing right now. Last second picking up that siphon, which makes it just enough for him to get back into this zone. And he still has high ground. Amidst all of that chaos, nearly losing his life to the zone, he is still maintaining composure, maintaining this high ground. He needs any elimination he can get for that siphon. That's his last rocket now. And he's just removed all of the build that was protecting him from potentially a big fall. Does go for the waterfall down. Knows this player's weak. Got lots of great tags on him. Looking for the edit replace. Does not get it. Still has it. High ground. No one's contesting for him for it right now. I like that he went ahead and used the rocket as well. Just go ahead and break this player down. They're pretty high above everyone. So now he just kind of forces this player down. What he's hoping to do is pick up a player along the way to get more rockets. And unfortunately, okay, so that player decides to send rockets to the wow. tart below and he picks up laner. They're on the descent phase. Dubs, you are absolutely destroying this lobby. Look at the players down below. Shotang, Lil Alk, Raylap. Kexi and oh, Zero Ping smacked. Lots of things happening down on that lower ground. But Phase Dubs is just biding his time, sitting on this high ground, getting raining in these drum gun shots onto his opponents. Isn't getting the eliminations. Looks like Zero Ping is getting those. He does get taken out by Raylap. Shotan goes down to the zone. This is a 1v1 situation. Raylap's able to get off that mini shield. Does have a little bit of a health yeah, equalizing moment here now. But Dubs is ready with that shotgun. Six eliminations. Like, this is a clinic right now. <sighs> Dub said, look, I've qualified. I'm just going to come back and just flex on literally the entire region. Now, <laughs> I want your honest opinion. Is Dubs good as they say he is? Or is he just another one of these players who has their moments? Comment down below and we love to see how your top five underrated list compares to ours. And I promise that we won't get salty. <laughs> All right, guys, once again, this is Keith Allen Henson. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more.